you're listening to this podcast and you're one or two years removed from applying to medical school, then put yourself in the best situation and try to take your MCAT before you apply. Ali back for some more MCAT podcast, MCAT 101 series. This is the third installment in, in our MCAT 101 series with the biggest question of the day. When do I take the MCAT? And then followed by how do I how do I sign up and all of that good stuff? So well, I think we, we, we talked a little bit in the, the first episode of MCAT 101 series about kind of timeline, but let's dive in a little bit more specifically what what the ideal timeline is for taking the MCAT. So I think it goes without saying the best time to take the MCAT is when you're ready to take the MCAT. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear a lot from students putting pressure on themselves because I need to take it in uh, like by January because my friends took it in January last year. Yep. Uh, or this is the expectation I put up upon myself. I just need to be done with it and that's it. Just take it whenever you're ready to take it. Now, I think the broader question now is when should you plan ahead to take it? Like if I'm designing my uh, my schedule for the next couple of years, I'm freshman or sophomore, when should I plan to take the MCAT? Uh, if you're not planning on taking any gap years, you want your MCAT score to be out by June of your junior year. So that when you apply, you're kind of like ready to hit the ground. Your MCAT is there, your primary application is there, your letters of recommendation uh, are there. So um, applying early uh, gives you an advantage. So you want, you want to make sure your MCAT is there by the time you submit your application. So applications start in kind of May, June of each application year. Yes. For starting medical school in the next application or the next uh, kind of calendar year. Yes. So it's one of the most confusing things for students is realizing just how long the medical school application cycle is. So theoretically, if you want to start medical school in 2025, you are applying May, June of 2024. That's when your applications open up. And so... If, if a student has to apply, their, their application opens May of 2024, and it takes a month to get the MCAT score, so they should theoretically be taking the MCAT January to March, April, May-ish, getting a little bit later and later and later yeah. of the year that they're applying to medical school. Yes. This way you are getting the advantage of being like the first one through the door because medical schools use rolling admissions or at least most medical schools use rolling admissions. So first come first serve. Um, you apply in June, your MCAT is ready. You're applying against a handful of students for all of the seats. Yep. And then if you apply in October, you are competing with all of the applicants for the two remaining seats. So, and in between June and October is kind of the number of seats is declining with time. Yeah. So apply as early as you can, plan to take your MCAT sometime in, yeah, January, I'm going to say um, March, April, May, but you, you're kind of cutting it close with May. Um, I hear a lot from my students that if I take it in January and I don't do well, then I have a chance to retake it in, in April or May. Yeah. Um, if you're taking it in May, you're kind of, putting all of your eggs in one basket because that's the score you're applying with or you're applying late. Yeah. And so just, just for some nuts and bolts here, the application, the primary application, you do not have to have an MCAT score to apply. You do not have to have taken the MCAT to apply to medical school. And so the risk that students have when taking a later MCAT, especially if it's their first one, is either applying on time, kind of that May, June, July-ish kind of time frame, 
with a solid MCAT score or they're applying without an MCAT score and just crossing their fingers. From, from, a, uh, from a mindset standpoint, when, student, uh, when a student knows I need to get my application in to get it verified, to do all that stuff because rolling admissions is important, I'm gonna study for the MCAT while I'm working on my applications and I'll just get my score back later. What do you think it does mindset-wise for, for a student? Again, if you're listening to this podcast and you're one or two years removed from applying to medical school, then put yourself in the best situation and try to take your MCAT before you apply. But if you will be in the situation where you will have to take the MCAT while you apply, then uh, I agree with Ryan, just submit your application as early as you can, even without an MCAT score. Uh, this way you get through at least the first door, you get your primary verified, you you might get a few secondaries uh, sent your way so you can start working on them. Uh, and by the time your MCAT score is out, then your application is ready for review and you might like you, you might still be early enough uh, to get a seat. So applying early gives you a big advantage, but doesn't mean that not applying early that it's impossible or you have no chance of getting in. Uh, so put yourself in the best situation, but if things happen, we can still do things about them to to make things, like to improve your chances. Yeah. One of my biggest things with taking a little bit of a later MCAT is the fact that MCAT prep gets in the way of application prep and application prep gets in the way of MCAT <laughs> prep. And you have these two competing priorities of like, I need to apply, I need to get my application early because of this musical chairs thing called rolling admissions. And I need to prep for the MCAT because I've already put it off once and I don't want to put it yeah. off again. And the more I put it off, just the more I get in my head. And, I, and, and so it, that's one of the biggest reasons for me as to why students should get the MCAT out of the way, yeah. ideally so that they can focus on the MCAT and then focus on applications. I, I fully agree. And uh, side note in here, it, it, it seems to me that students underestimate how much time application writing takes. Yes. So, and then they will get close to the application. And like I've heard, I've heard from a lot of students who did not write or start even writing their, like the, the primary application, their personal statement. So sometime mid-May, yeah. your personal statement take months to write, not two days or three days. <laughs> like it's, it's a whole process. And this is the one, like this is the one essay that tells medical schools about you. So you want to put a lot of effort into it. So yeah. start preparing for your application months in advance. I know application opens in um, application. The application opens in May, but you want to be writing like putting pen to paper probably January at the latest. Yeah, yeah. Or the essay will look like. I want to be a doctor because I like science and I want to help people. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that is the application, that, Everybody. Uh, the personal statement that comes from that. Uh, all right. So that's very important. Let's talk about application or, or MCAT timing mm -hmm. for someone with accommodations. Now, uh, getting accommodations for whatever reasons you may need accommodations is a really hard process with the AMC. Yes. They are very stringent, very overly restrictive with who they allow accommodations uh they have <laughs> the person who like at least as far as i know the person who uh is in charge of the whole accommodation system at the AAMC uh used to work for the insurance companies denying claims for patients <laughs> like it makes sense of like because I, I made that analogy once i said that applying for accommodations for the mcat is like needing to get an mri because whatever and your insurance company goes no you don't need that <laughs> that's the double amc <laughs> and and there's there's a group out there um uh, called the ethical students for admissions or something like that and they were like well actually the person in charge of accommodations is actually an insurance person uh wow. who, who used to be an insurance person doing exactly that of like no you don't need that no that's too much money you don't need that no you don't need that um and and so it's just a ridiculous expensive process just to get accommodations because yeah. they want like up to date evaluations and testing and doctor's notes and it's just it's absolutely ridiculous so Let's assume someone has all of that. 
they yeah. can get accommodations, but then there's still issues with when to actually schedule their MCAT. What does that look like? Yeah, so uh, two things you want to keep in mind. If you did all of the evaluations and you're ready to apply for accommodations, does not mean that AMC will give you accommodations the next day. It's going to take them up to 60 days to give you this decision. So you want to be very early in the process to get everything in done, go to the accommodation website, get everything you need and start working on it way ahead of time. Plus, like Ryan said, you're probably going to get less accommodations on the MCAT to compare to what you're getting in your undergrad institution. So if you plan to appeal, that also takes time. Yep. Now, what complicates things even more, if you're getting extra time, you are taking the MCAT over two days, whether you're taking double time, time and a half, or even time and a quarter, you're still taking the time over two days. Now. What's what's important here is that you're only allowed to take the MCAT when the MCAT is offered on two consecutive days. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the calendar. For example, for the January dates, we have two consecutive sets. We have January 14, 15, and 2021. So you can choose any of these two pairs. But March, we only have two dates on the 12th and the 25th. You cannot take the test in March if you have accommodations because you're only allowed to take the test on consecutive days. So your next option is April 8, April 9. Now, this is important for students who are like not on track to be ready for the MCAT. Let's say you're taking a January test date and you're debating whether you wanna change it, then be careful that changing it is not changing it by a couple of weeks, changing it for you is changing it by more than a month Yeah. Uh, just because of the way accommodations work. It just adds more complications and more barriers for, for students, unfortunately. Uh, let, let's talk about just the, the nuts and bolts. So students uh, need to go to the AMC website to Perfect. create an account, to go register for the MCAT. I think, uh, what's, what's the current uh, price to take the MCAT? Do you, do you know? Uh, yeah, it is $325 for most students. But if you apply to the fee assistance program, assistance program, then you're only paying 130. Okay. And if you are taking the test internationally, it's costs more uh, for some yes. reason. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it definitely costs more. I'm not sure. I think it might be that in Canada, it costs the same, but mm. uh, everywhere else, it's more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something a lot of students don't know is, is you, you can be in Spain and take the MCAT at a, at a test center. Uh, and the MCAT does have international dates for MCAT administration. Yeah. So something yeah. that, that students should be aware of. Um, because, hey, we, we have international students that come to the, the States to yeah. go to medical school. So that, yeah. that is a thing. my first MCAT abroad. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so it costs money to register for the exam. There's this question of when should I take the exam? When am I going to be ready for the exam? The the issue that comes into play is the AMC releases MCAT dates twice a year, I believe, and registration opens twice a year for for different blocks of of the calendar um, mm -hmm. for for taking the MCAT. Registering for the exam is like this is all just a big giant game for the WMC. Yeah. Registering for the exam is important. Registering early for the exam, I should yeah. say, is important because the exam slots fill up. Because you have to go to a testing center, there are only a certain number of testing centers in, in every location throughout the country. There are only a certain number of seats at each of those testing centers. And these testing centers don't only test the MCAT. They are administering tests for lots of different companies and, and tests out there. And so seats for the AMC for the MCAT are limited. So when you think you're ready to take the test, you may go onto the AMC website today and go, uh-oh, like there's no, I, I can't take the MCAT. I can't register for the date that I want. Yeah. Um, or I have to fly to like Guam to go take the MCAT, which <laughs> is what happened. students were doing 
with the new MCAT change in 2015. Yeah, 2015 plus crazy. Students were, were like, I need to take the old MCAT. I'm going to take it wherever I can. <laughs> like Guam was Guam the, was open. The, Guam was open. Uh, it was one of the furthest ones that I heard yeah. students flying to. Um, and so ideally, you don't have to travel to take the MCAT. That comes with its own complications and sleep issues and, and everything else. Um, talk about when a student should register, right? We know when they should take it, but when should they register knowing full well that as a pre-med student, they have this little voice in their head that goes, I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. I, I, I'm going to bomb this. Uh, I only want to register when I'm, I'm sure I'm going to just crush the MCAT because I don't want to pay any rescheduling fees and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and rescheduling fees are back. So we had uh, we had a year and a half of during the pandemic where rescheduling fees were uh, were waived, but rescheduling fees are back. Uh, so that's definitely something to take into consideration when registering. Yeah. So my advice here is, if you're planning to take the test in January or March. Um, I would say register as soon as you can, just because you don't want to go through the headache of like waiting on your decision till mostly December and then struggle to find seats and have to travel to take your MCAT. So register as soon as you can. Registration this year is on October 13th and 14th at noon, depending whether you're on East Coast for 13th and West Coast for 14th, mostly like middle of country or the right side of the country and the left side of the country on two separate days. Register on that day for the January date you want or the March date you want right now. And then work your schedule so that you're ready by that time. If you have serious doubts, and by serious doubt, I mean like Ryan said, like feeling a bit anxious about the test is not right now a serious doubt. A serious doubt is... I cannot get 10 to 12 hours to study for the MCAT. I'm always getting like maybe less than eight hours per week to study for the MCAT. You will not be ready by January. Then register, make the decision now to register for the test in March, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then if you decide to, you're not ready after you register, you want to figure that out as soon as you can, just because of the how the fees play out. So the fees changed this year, instead of having the silver, the bronze, and the and the gold zones to to reschedule now they have more like by days like 60 days before the test or up to 60 days before the test you only have to pay um uh, i think 50 dollars to reschedule oh that's so kind of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> 30 to 59 so between month and two months before the test you have to pay 100 and between 10 days and 29 days before the test you have to pay 200 dollars. so the earlier you know whether you will be ready or not um, the less money you pay to reschedule. Yeah. Um, but I think for most students walking into the last 60 days before your test, you should have a good idea whether you should be, whether you will be ready to, to take your test or not. How does someone know whether they're ready to take the test? Oh, that's a great question. So, um, two things you want to, you want to look at, how am I performing on my practice tests? And you might not two months away, you might not be scoring in the range, but am I trending in the same direction or in the right direction to, to hit my target scores? Mm -hmm. And two is, will I have enough time to get to my target score in the two months I have left? So if you look at the next two months and you think that, let's say you're taking the test in January, if you look in November and say that, well, I haven't been prepping for my classes, I probably have to take two weeks off for my finals. Um, uh, I haven't been studying consistently for the MCAT, then you probably need to change your test data. Uh, otherwise, rely on your scores to see if you're trending in the right direction. Okay, interesting. So rescheduling a test, uh, registering for the test, when to register for the test, are all very important parts of this process. Um, the the fees associated with taking the MCAT, make sure that you have enough uh, on your credit card or have enough cash in the, the bank account um, so that you can uh, register for the test without needing to, to mess around with any sort of money stuff. Uh, because it's it's important, right? It's uh, a test, that, unfortunately, that we have to take. It's a test that we have to put up with with the fees and everything else. 
on, on top of all of it, at least at a bare minimum, the WMC material, right? The, the test prep material that they so lovingly sell us as well. Um, <laughs> so a, as a student is going through this, um, they, they're, they're hearing us say, okay, uh, I need to take it kind of January, March, April of the year that I want to apply. That'll give me some time to, to take it, get it out of the way, start working on my applications, whatever. Um, at what point, uh, as they're going through this process, do you recommend, like, just stop studying, take a break, and just delay your application? So delay your entire application, not just, uh, not just switch your MCAT test date. Correct. Yeah. At, at some point, I think theoretically, it's like just e even if you've submitted your application, just stop working on secondaries and, and just plan on taking the MCAT January of next year and apply next year. Yeah. So um, I think there are two answers to this question. The first one, it depends on where you are with your mental health and with uh, like how you're taking care of yourself. If you find yourself like you're too tired, you're too anxious, you don't have the energy to open an MCAT book to study for, for the MCAT, uh, you're not being productive. Uh, the whole stress of taking the MCAT, doing your classes, maybe working and applying is getting to you, then it might be time to just take a few days off. And if at the end of those days, you're still not ready, then maybe apply next cycle. Uh, the next one is more practical. The next reason why you would just drop everything is just mostly how things are going with your application and with your scores. Mm -hmm. So if studying, let's say you're, you're taking the MCAT, planning to take the MCAT in June, and you're already going to be a bit late in your application, or you're pushing your test date, and now you're taking the test in uh, August or September, and applying in the same cycle is not a great idea. Uh, applying late and doing your secondaries while you're studying for the MCAT and the the, the information we, we discussed earlier about application and MCAT all at the same time, I'll just say that, and you might be taking classes also at that same time, then just you're young if you're listening to this podcast probably and you can afford to take a year off, maybe a gap year where you do research or volunteering or even travel and then apply to medical school next year. The average age, uh, I think, I don't remember the exact uh, latest statistics, but the average age for students starting medical school is in mid twenties now. Yep. So uh, you don't need to start like, life is, is ahead of you. So apply when you're ready. Take the MCAT when you're ready, even if that entails taking a year off. Yeah, yeah. I think I think allowing yourself some grace and and knowing that um, it's better to apply with a better score and a more complete application than I trying know, to yeah. rush everything and stress yourself out and give yourself some sort of autoimmune disease because uh, you're super stressed. Yeah. It's just it's not worth it in in the grand yeah. scheme of things and and just. Uh, allowing yourself to to take a little time. I've been doing uh, application academy uh, with students uh, as group coaching to help them with their applications, and I'm very surprised seeing how many students make that decision of like, I just got behind in my applications. I'm gonna apply next year. I'm just gonna stop yeah. and apply next year. Um, so it, it's okay. It's okay to do that. Um, all right. Anything else about registering uh, for the MCAT? Any any um, tricks or uh, kind of traps that students fall into when when they're registering? Um, just a couple of things. One, follow AMC on Twitter, or or even if you don't have Twitter, just go to the Google AMC Twitter MCAT and just bookmark that page because AMC shares a lot of like information yeah. about registration and read the information about the process of October 13, October 14. It's it's weird, Ryan, with, with the way it's going to go. Yep. I think you if you log in up until 10 minutes before noon when the application opens, then all of these people will be taken and they will be randomized into the order they will be in to pick their seats. And starting from 11.50 up, all throughout the day, then everybody else who logs in takes like the back of the line. 
So AMC comes up with new processes every single time. The website sometimes crashes on the, on the day. Sometimes <laughs> the website crashes. <laughs> the website crashes. So uh, be patient. Just a lot of students are applying. And I think most students end up finding their seats. I know that last year we didn't have a good experience with registration for the MCAT just because of like the amount of days that have been to move to be moved because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, but just if the website crashes, just go on Twitter and see what instructions they gave you there, they, they will give you there because probably this is where they will post the instructions. So having um, AMC MCAT Twitter like bookmarked or on your phone next to you when you apply, I think it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are uh, one one trick that I like to tell students because I like this kind of stuff is signing up for a free account of um, if this then that. So ifttt.com. And, and so you can you can go and create an automation that says whenever the AAMC account sends a tweet, like shoot me an email or send me a text message. And that way you're constantly kind of updated. And, and usually it's it's not like instantaneous, but it's like every yeah. five, 10, 15 minutes or so IFTTT will check. But that's that's one way if you're not a if you're not a Twitter person, you don't have a Twitter account, you're not on there a lot, you can set up an automation that can ping you in those moments. That's a great idea. So all right, another MCAT 101 in the books. Uh, I'm excited for this little uh, just back to basic series for students to really uh, understand what this MCAT is all about. Next week, we're going to be talking about something that y- you hopefully will be an expert in, and that's uh, setting up these study schedules. This is a big one. Yes.